Hey, good morning. Welcome to a weekend reading vlog. Today is the 74th Indian Independence Day and I have an off from work. So what better way to utilize a holiday than to read all day long, which is exactly what I plan to do. I am currently making my way through this tome of a book called A Suitable Boy by Vikram Seth. It is a family saga which chronicles the lives of four different families living in Purva Pradesh in the post-independence era. So the story begins in the year 1951, three years after the British were driven away and we get to witness the impact of the partition on the lives of the people as well as the British cultural imperialism which has influenced their mannerisms to a certain extent. Several characters in this book are also coming to terms with the uh, way in which society and societal values have changed and the sense of orthodoxy that permeates many of their families. The book is split into 19 parts and each of these parts have several chapters. Um, it is a very expansive story. I mean, obviously you can make out it's an expansive story. It's close to 1500 pages long. <laughs> Uh, but we follow each of these characters storylines in detail. Normally I would not enjoy reading a book that has almost 20 prominent characters in it but Vikram Seth has done wonders with his ability to bring characters to life, give them very distinct identities and have them all be interconnected in some or the other way. So it has been a lot of fun reading these chapters, discovering how all of these characters somehow cross paths or influence the direction of each other's lives. The book starts off with Savita Mehra's wedding and how her younger sister Lata is now being emotionally blackmailed by her mother to agree to get married to a suitable boy. But Lata wants none of that. She has her mindset on what she wants in her life and getting married to someone that her family arranges is definitely not on her agenda. One thing that has been interesting to observe is the different generations of characters that have been written about. It's around 11 a.m. right now and I am on page 345. While I had heard of this book for many years, I never really thought that I would pick it up until I saw the trailer for the TV show adaptation and then I knew I had to read the book. So a bunch of us on Instagram decided to do a read along and a watch along of sorts. We're supposed to be reading 50 pages every day in order to finish the book by 31st August. But because work has been hectic, I have been falling behind and I'm planning to make use of today and tomorrow to catch up. Uh, I will also be watching the TV show so you'll also hear my thoughts about that in this reading vlog. Um, I hope you have fun watching this reading vlog. Stick around if you want to know whether to pick up the book, watch the show or not and a whole lot of other fun stuff. I just finished having lunch. I've read around 10 pages since the morning and I hate characters like Elena Garwal with a passion. It's because of bigots like him that communities split apart. So much harm comes to innocence in a society. Um, he's definitely one of the most villainous characters in this book. The fifth and the sixth sections um, have a lot to do with the political scenario in India during that time. So we get to read about how parliamentary debates take place. Uh, we get to read a lot about the discussion, the discourse surrounding the Zamindari abolition bill. I wouldn't say that I dislike these sections in the book because they've definitely been very insightful, but they're not the most engaging chapters from what I've read so far. Some of my favorite characters, or at least um, storylines that I really enjoy reading are about Lata, Man, Saida Bai and also recently um, Savita and Pran. Lata is the youngest daughter of the Mehras. Man is the revenue minister Mahesh Kapoor's son 
And Saeeda Bai is a courtesan who is known for her musical prowess. She performs ghazals at many of the esteemed residences in Purva Pradesh, in Brahmpur to be exact. Um, Man, the first time we are introduced to Saeeda Bai is when she performs at Mahesh Kapoor's house, and that's when uh, Man's infatuation with her begins. There's a lot of forbidden romance in this book. Forbidden because, well, society at that time in Brahmpur wouldn't allow these couples to be together. So Man and Saeeda Bai are one of them. Then there's Lata who falls in love with uh, Kabir, a boy from her university, the Brahmpur University. When her family finds out that he is not a Hindu, they essentially. ship lata away to calcutta to go live with her elder brother arun who by the way is such a notoriously arrogant character arun and his wife meenakshi are just so spiteful and full of attitude now because every section in fact every few chapters follows different sets of characters it feels like it's been a while since i read about man and lata some of the themes that i'm talking about may seem familiar may even seem trite to you but that's because it is a reality for a lot of people even today and as you read the book you get to realize that vikram seth has spent so much time and effort fleshing out these plot points and perfecting the storylines of these different characters i am going to go to a reading sprint for about an hour and then i'll come back with an update <laughs> It's 5:30 p.m. now and I am on page 404. So just a little over 1000 pages left. Uh this is chapter 7.2 that I've read up till now and I've just discovered one thing that I don't particularly enjoy reading in this book which is the emphasis on classical Hindi music. Um now because I don't have much knowledge of it nor am I really interested in this topic Uh, I am finding some of the chapters that are about um, Ishak Khan and the music teacher, and um, even some of the other musicians in the book. I am not very much interested in these chapters, but I feel like they may have a important role to play later on in the book. Hence, I am reading through them. But yeah, I am not really fond of that theme in the book. we are finally reading more about lata varun arun mrs rupa mehra in part 7 and um, these chapters are taking place in arun's home in calcutta i am so much more happy with uh, the sibling bond between varun and lata because arun is such a bully he plays this egotistical male role where he wants everyone in the household to listen to him uh, and he's constantly just bullying varun don't like that i was glad to read that part where lata sort of speaks to varun and she is trying to encourage him to stand up for himself and not really let anyone boss him or put him down i hope that varun at some point pays heed to her suggestion and sort of just stands up to arun it's 10:30 pm and just before i had dinner i reached page 436 of the book remember how in the previous reading of date i was talking about wanting varun to stand up to his elder brother well that happens and it was a delightful scene the only thing that annoyed me so much about that scene is well basically arun and his entire family they're expecting guests um who are arun's british employers so he wants his entire family to appear respectable and esteemed and look posh and everyone's just dressed up the food's prepared the whole house is ready waiting for his employers to be there and varun steps out of his room wearing kurta pajama which is essentially a form of indian attire and arun gets so furious he starts humiliating varun yelling at him in front of everyone telling him why he's not dressed up in western clothes He even dares to call Varun's traditional attire ridiculous clothes, and that pissed me off so much. 
it just goes back to all these arguments that i've read during my english literature classes about the west wanting the east to be more cultured and wanting to sort of influence them in these western mannerisms to make asians and all other cultures appear more refined because of having adapted to these western mannerisms i was so annoyed reading that okay now that scene aside something i'm really happy about right now at this point in the work is that we are introduced to the chatterjees and meenakshi is i feel a totally different person when she's with her family she's not as venomous and as cunning or manipulative as when she is with the mehras that is with her husband arun and his family um i quite like what i've seen of the chatterjees i think their family dynamic is one of the best in the book till now i'm going to call it a day after watching one episode of the a suitable boy tv show so here's the deal i am not as fond of the tv show adaptation as i would have liked to be granted that it's fun to watch these characters being enacted i just feel like the tv show is rushing through the plot points of the book well rushing is an understatement because this tv show is only going to have 6 episodes and well the book is close to 1500 pages long so i've only seen the first episode so far and it just jumps across so many chapters and so many parts without really doing complete justice to either and then i also feel like the writing the dialogues the acting to some extent they're all quite underwhelming so i'm watching the show because it's fun to be watching it while reading the book but i don't love it no <laughs> for if not for sleeping in i just woke up really late around 11 uh now it's 12:30 and i am on page 477 um there was a really fun scene where lata goes out dancing with arun and meenakshi so it was interesting to see her open up like that and that's probably the one thing i'm going to credit meenakshi for um for a point in time i felt like kabir's story was over and that we wouldn't get to see more of him but then he sends a letter to lata in calcutta and she's still pretty mopey about it um then during her get together with the chatterjees we are introduced to amit chatterjee who is meenakshi's elder brother and now i have a feeling that something could possibly happen between lata and amit Yesterday night I finished watching the second episode of the show and there are quite a lot of disparities between the book and the TV show. Um Lata in the TV show is just so chirpy and bubbly. It's not that Lata in the book is a very serious person or anything, but there's definitely a personality difference between who Lata is shown to be in the book and how jolly she appears to be in the TV show. Um I am currently reading chapter 7.25 and we are getting to read a little bit more about Varun and his friends and how they are very much interested in horse races so they are into the whole betting scenario and that's what's going on right now those of you who are reading the book or have read the book will know that Harish being one of the characters in the book was also shown to be as a possible love interest for Lata so now that there are three characters who could possibly be Lata's love interest i feel like she would get along best with Amit out of all three of them and so i'm eager to see where that storyline goes if at all um what else what else what else now it's as i mentioned earlier it's around 12:30 and i'm going to go help my mom make lunch we're having pasta today and i love pasta so i'm super excited about that uh, after that i have a couple of chores to do at home and then i should get back to reading Today the plan is to finish part 8 by the end of the day and I don't think that will be difficult at all. I should definitely reach there. I'm so happy with the amount of reading I've done this weekend. I feel like 
I can certainly catch up with the rest of the group and get back on track with our reading schedule. Yesterday we had our fourth discussion post and I'm really happy that so many of us are coming up with these really interesting discussion questions and discussion points. It makes me miss being part of a book club because we get to like deconstruct book plots and like share our thoughts about what's going on. It's definitely a fun experience. So if you're not part of a book club yet, take it from me, you need to join one. I'm trying to align my reading and watching of A Suitable Boy in such a way that I don't spoil anything for myself when I'm reading the book because my reading experience is what matters the most to me. So I think after reading up till part 11 or something, now I'll watch the third episode. That's how I am planning to do things. Um, so see you after lunch. probably mentioned this before on my channel but any book that makes a reference to Jane Austen or any of Austen's works immediately gets a brownie point from me. So in this book Deepankar Chatterjee seems to be a fan of Jane Austen. So the author has already mentioned her a couple of times and I'm loving it. The Chatterjees actually have this very peculiar habit of breaking into poetry in between their conversations um, just randomly one person will start off rhyming what they're saying and then the rest of the family will join. Well, not really the rest of the family but the young Chatterjees. It's quite adorable and uncannily enough, it's something that even my parents do. So in between a random conversation, they'll all just start talking in rhymes. It's quite funny. It's 5pm and I have reached page 522 of this giant tome. Um, I thought I'd end the vlog here with a few concluding thoughts. I feel like the TV show should have been around two seasons long with like 10 episodes each because that would have made it more satisfactory and it would have been able to do justice to the entire book. Right now it's just really rushed and doesn't spend ample time on plot points that deserve a lot of attention. This book makes several references to real life figures like Mahatma Gandhi, Jawaharlal Nehru, Subhash Chandra Bose, Hitler, Napoleon, etc. And so despite being a historical fiction, it still talks a lot about the contributions of these individuals in politics and how that has shaped India's sociopolitical scenario today. Some themes like gender inequality, communal tension, infidelity, marriage are all imbued in the narrative and they occur across various points in the story. As of now, that is, having read one third of the book, I would definitely recommend it to you. The writing makes it easy to lose yourself in the story and there wasn't any point in time where I was extremely bored because I felt like the amount of information given in the book is totally justified. And like the blurb on the cover, which is by the Times, it says, make time for it, it will keep you company for the rest of your life. I feel like that rings so true. Reading about all these different characters, the obstacles they have to face in order to live their lives on their own terms. There's just so much to this story, so much value, so much you can learn from. I am so glad that I saw that trailer on that day and decided to buy myself a copy of this book and read it. If not for that trailer, I totally would not have considered reading this book, to be honest. So in a way, I am really thankful to the TV show for having reintroduced this book to me and for compelling me to pick it up. 
I know this vlog would not have been like a proper review of the book because I haven't read enough of the book to share my complete thoughts on it. Um, so I will be talking about this book overall in my monthly wrap up. So stay tuned for that if you want to know whether my thoughts have changed or what additional things I would like to say about this book. Um, I really had tons of fun filming this vlog this weekend and I'm so happy with how much reading I got done. Um, just sitting down with this book, it makes me so excited. <laughs> That's it for this vlog. I hope you had fun watching it. If you've read this book, then please tell me what you thought about it in the comments below. And I look forward to hearing from you. Thanks so much for watching. I will see you soon in another video. Bye.